I'm getting to live every woman's fantasy of waiting on my husband hand and foot and and our refrigerator died. So, <laughs> yay. Are you going to uh, get a new one right away or try to fix it? What do you do when oh, that happens? I, I went over to the patient and said, hey, where's your wallet? And he goes, <laughs> he goes, he goes, it's in my jacket. I said, he goes, what, what do you need? I said, your visa card, because we have to buy a refrigerator. And so I bought it. I literally ordered it online. And I am terrible with, um, I'm just terrible with spatial stuff. Like my brain is missing something. I got out the tape measure. I measured the opening for the refrigerator so many times. And each time <laughs> I would write it down. And then I would put post-it notes on the kitchen island and study them. It's yeah, that was 36 inches all four times. Then I had to go online and I had to find a refrigerator to fit the opening. But also it had to have certain things that the sheriff felt that a, a refrigerator should have. Like he wanted it to be a side by side and and could magnets stick to it? Because a lot of refrigerators now they have this like coating on them where a magnet mm -hmm. won't stick. Mm -hmm. The the opening is so specific of this refrigerator. That I, I finally went over to him and said, the only refrigerator that will fit in this hole is coming from Aeroflot, okay? Like, I don't know if magnets are going to stick to it or not. I just hope it's cold after we plug it in. So I ordered that, sight unseen, and it, it's going to get here whenever it gets here. And everything's in the, we have a little, like, beer fridge in the garage. I just shoved everything out there and um, and said to myself, well, you know, you are, you are not having a boring life. Like, look at all the exciting adventures that you're having. Oh, and I, I told um, Max and Lamar and Doc this, Bob, early, early before you signed in. I also um, had fraud on my credit card. They ran up twenty three thousand dollars worth of fraudulent. Whoa! Charges. Yeah. Whoa! You are having yeah. a January, man. <laughs> yeah. That's so, um, first I. First, I dealt with that. Like, I, you know, I almost feign it when I opened the, it said, your payment is due. And I opened it. It was like $20, $23,000. Wait a minute. Did, did I buy a leg for my husband? And I don't remember. Like, did I buy a leg on the black market? No. Um, and I, I'm looking at the transactions. I don't re recognize any of them. So, of course, it's a hassle, but, you know, they're not going to hold me responsible for it. Blah, no, blah, they blah. won't. They won't. They won't. So it you was, know, you, you it know was what's just really a hassle. strange? When your when your refrigerator dies, and I did the same thing because our ours did about two years ago, and so you have to have a new refrigerator. I must have measured that thing twenty times because the it's such a tight fit, and 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 you find a refrigerator that's the right size, and you say, really, what's what's the likelihood that it's going to fit in there perfectly, right? Because whoever built this house was not you know communicating years ago with the refrigerator people. So what's the likelihood that it's exactly 19 and a half inches or whatever it is? And when they put it in, it's just amazing. Like, oh, it does fit. It does fit. It's a standard well, thing. Everybody in the world not, has agreed that it's a standard thing. Not to sound like everybody's dad, but that refrigerator, we bought it in 2016. Like, excuse me for living and thinking that it should last a little bit longer. Like, yeah. don't, aren't, doesn't that seem wrong to you? And it I know does. it's because I was raised by old people who, um, when World War II ended, they bought Kenmore appliances and they stayed, they stayed completely functional until the, everyone died. Like, so I know totally. I have unrealistic expectations, but a refrigerator and I'm, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. I, I'm, and again, I'm like sounding like everybody's dad. Like, where are my cargo shorts? Okay. Because I'm just like pacing around this house going, I can't believe this. And, well, and my daughter said to me, well, oh my God, mom, wasn't it like six years old? Yes, but they're not there. I'm sorry, I Lamar. With you. Aren't they supposed to last longer? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, they are. Bring whatever you drink and celebrate happy hour, 7 p.m. Eastern, live on the Bob and Sherry Facebook page. It's Bob and Sherry. The other night, I was cooking dinner, and it was a pretty elaborate thing I was cooking. So, and I'm, a, I'm I'll be the first to say, I'm a messy cook. I mean, stuff goes everywhere. I'm seasoning stuff. I'm throwing stuff everywhere. You know, it's it's sort of a big deal. Yeah. So we get through, yeah. we get through eating, and uh, turned out really good. 
And so I'm looking at the kitchen and I'm like, okay, I got to do something about this because we, we've got a gas gas stove and you look down and it's like salt and pepper and all kinds of spices everywhere. And I'd had some uh, uh, bacon bits that I'd cooked and they're everywhere. So I move the grates off and I go ahead and take all the burners and the burner caps and I move everything to the side and I go through and I sort of brush up all the big pieces of stuff and I throw it away and the little stuff, I go get the little shark handheld vacuum, which is great. It's just fantastic, fantastic. And so I start to use it and Carla goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm vacuuming other stuff. She goes, we don't use that for that. The vacuum is not for that. I said, is it not for picking up dirt and debris? She goes, well, yes, but if you're picking up food particles, I, it's just you shouldn't do that. And I'm like, okay, fine. And so I start doing something else. And she goes, have you got an attitude about this? And I said, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I said, a little bit. She goes, why have you got an attitude? I said, because <laughs> when I come up with a plan, you always, and I said, yes, I'm using the always word. I'm using it right now. You Danger. always oh, have a different, danger. I know. But listen, I was off the hook. I said, I, always, if whatever my plan is, you come along with your plan, and it's always different than my plan. And she goes, well, why don't you argue for your plan? And I said, because it's so much easier just to say the heck with my plan and go with your plan. She said, because yeah. when you do that, you get an attitude. She said, so now here's what you got to do. If you believe in your plan, you have to argue for your plan. Or if you go with my plan, you got to lose the attitude because, you you know, that just builds up after a while and then you go crazy. And I said, well, OK, whatever. So I'm going ahead and I'm finishing up and I don't use the vacuum because, my gosh, I'm not going to do it. So I don't use the vacuum. I get everything clean and I wipe everything down and I put the big grates back on the thing and I step back and everything's clean. And she comes by and I said, what do you think? She goes, oh, yeah, that looks good. She said, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that. Evidently, that was a that was a good plan. And she waits about two beats and she goes, but my plan would have been to put the burners and the burner covers back on the stove before you put those big grates on. Because now you can't use the oven until you take the grates off and put the other stuff back together. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She goes. But that's just my plan. So we'll go with your plan, but I don't know what's going to happen after that. So <sighs> another loss. Now you're filled with self-doubt. You're filled another with self-doubt. <laughs> this is a oh cannot my. win. I know. Cannot win. I know. Because I was so flustered about making my plan work that I forgot half of my plan, which was to put the oven back, I mean, the stove back together. That's what oh, they God. want to do. They want to confuse you. They want to confuse yes. us. And she's got Our, that little smile. They're like, oh, yeah, your plan's good, but I don't know. But she goes, go with your plan, though, every time. Go with your plan. So I got to wait until the next is, time. This is my version of it, and, and actually, um, it kind of worked out for me. So Mary had the floor in the garage coated with some sort of material. These guys come in and they coat it and it looks, it looks like a floor. Yeah. I mean, it looks like, looks you great. know, like yeah. a kitchen floor. Right. So I parked my car in there and after a year, some of, you know, the debris the car has brought in is stained it in like 10 or 15 places. And she's been after me and after me to clean it. And I went, all right, I'm going to do it today. I'm going to, I'm going to clean it today. So. Um, I go, I say, I'm going over to the uh, hardware store. We, we have a real nice hardware store. I got to get a few items. And she said, well, I want to go with you. And I said, okay, that's fine. And she said, how are you going to clean it? And I said, I'm going to get on my hands and knees with some rags. I'm going to get painter's rags and I'm going to clean it with a, uh, you know, a, a degreaser. And she said, well, why don't you use a mop? And I said, I, I don't want to use a mop. I want to get right down there in my hands and knees. So we walk into the hardware store and one of the guys comes over who works there and he says, what can I get for you? And I said, <clears throat> uh, my wife here needs a pair of knee pads. And I just let it sit. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and the guy looks, looks at me. He doesn't know what to do, right? Because we're customers. He doesn't know what to do. And I looked at her 
And she said, I have to give you that one. 